everybody. Today I want to talk about a very cool Pi Day activity that you can do. Um, it's really geared towards the younger grades, uh, probably your upper elementary school, like fourth, fifth grade, but it does work with middle school kids. You, it would be a stretch maybe to work with your high school kids, but you could definitely differentiate this. Um, it's basically what I call going to Pi school and graduating, so the kids get to see how pi really, um, how pi relates to circles, obviously, but where the number 3.14159, so on and so on, um, actually works, actually how it came, came about, more or less, because, um, you know, that leads into the discussion is math discovered or invented, but, um, you know, that, I'll leave that up to you to discuss with your students, but essentially, you, as a teacher, you've probably seen that Pi is usually written as 3.14159, so on and so on. But also as a fraction, um, it typically typically can be seen as 22 over 7, all right, which is a very um, straightforward, uh, good estimation or approximation of um, pi as a fraction. So with this lesson today, <clears throat> you're going to see that kids are going to be making their own um, their own caps, graduation caps. Um, I want to show you that it's very um, basic in terms of materials that you need, but it definitely will give the kids a good opportunity to see why pi is what it is, more or less, okay? Um, so I hope you enjoyed it. I've done this before with um, fifth graders when I was student teaching. They really, really liked it. We made a whole, almost a whole day out of it, you know, bringing in pi, any types of circles that were treats and things like that. Um, the materials that you need is, is very basic, as, I'll, as you'll see. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Um, let me know what you think about it. Um, also share out some ideas that you have used for Pi Day as well uh, that might help other teachers and students. Thanks. All right, essentially here is the materials that you're gonna use. So I'm using um, more of what we would use for our poster boards in terms of paper. It might be better to use something that's a little thicker like actual construction paper. It all depends on uh, what you have on hand or how much preparation you wanna do. So I actually already went ahead and cut out uh, the top of what your cap would be, which is a 12 by 12 piece of uh, black construction paper. Like I said, this is a little bit more flimsy. Uh, I would suggest to probably use something that's a little bit more sturdy. Now, you don't have to use black. Obviously, you can you make it what you want. You could use your own school colors. Uh, the kids could get creative. You could go as far as to uh, decorate the top, like some, um, uh, seniors do on graduation day um, but I would definitely th say to use 12 by 12 unless you got the really younger guys um, and then maybe you could go smaller I uh, you could also modify this by cutting it out yourself you could have them do it. it all depends on how much class time you have and then in terms of the thing uh, the piece that will hold this together on top of the kids heads is Obviously, you want to go, as a teacher, you should know that you're going to want to go larger than 22 inches. Um, once again, if you got the smaller guys, um, you could go smaller or bigger. It's, it's, it's really up to you. But uh, this is a good um, benchmark to start out with. I always think that, from my experience, to make the top to bottom thicker than shorter is always better. This is another thing that you could modify. You could have them do it on their own. You could do it yourself. Um, this way, you, you want to make this these lines obviously parallel so it's not all flimsy or crooked on the kids. And then the next thing that I know as a teacher you may already have some concerns with is that you're going to use this um, measuring tape here that tailors use when they're um, measuring for garments and things like that. Um, as a teacher and more importantly as a parent, uh, using this from one kid's head to the next may be a concern. So depending on how many you have, um, Honestly, I don't know offhand what would be the best way uh, to clean these from one kid's head to the next. Um, uh, I don't know if you could use some disinfectant or things like that. Ideally, you would want to have one for each kid, but we know how budgets work from one school to the next. Um, obviously, you're going to want to use your customary units, which is your inches and things like that. Now, as you go through it, the objective of the lesson is that as you measure each kid's head, that will be your numerator, right? Um, so we're really getting the circumference of the student's heads, right, all the way around. And they would record that on a sheet of paper of some sort. You, this is something that you can make up. Um, and then I actually have them write it on the board just to see how one kid's head might be different from the next. You know, this is obviously something, something that you could either 
do on the board or if you want to keep it more subtle and private, you know, you can have the kids do it on their own. All right, and then after you do that, what you can do is um, have them piece this together. Well, actually, after you, you have that, you're gonna um, assist the kids with stapling this together, staple, glue, whatever works, that it fits to their head, all right? And then the part that is definitely a little bit more difficult is you wanna get this to look as much like a perfect circle as possible because the next thing you wanna do is measure across for the diameter, all right? And then from there, what you'll do is take the circumference of what they uh, record it, divide it by their, new, their diameter now, and it should be very, very close, if not exact, to pi. And as a math teacher or even an elementary school teacher, this is something that you may already know. All right, so this could lead into a good discussion. Um, it definitely taps into their division skills. You can talk about fractions, um, decimals, um, what, you know, a, a great a conversation starter about like circles in relation to pi. Um, I know there's a, even a thing about the pyramids when it comes to pi and how like it, it's crazy that, you know, there's, you take the height, measure it by the, um, the circumference of each pyramid. It comes out to be perfect, perfectly for pi. Um, very simple, straightforward. Like I said, it's mostly geared towards your elementary school kids, but I think it could work with, with any, um, age group, honestly.